Uh, hey everybody, Teching here. Uh, just gonna take a little break from pure nostalgia to uh, discuss some One Piece news. That's right, we got a news video, and I honestly feel like I'm one of the first people to talk about this. I woke up a little while ago, some people were talking about it on Twitter, but uh, I, I might actually be head of the game here, a little bit ahead of the curve. So let's get into this. Um, Jump Festa 2017 is going on right now over in Japan. Uh, so uh, Oda, he didn't actually appear, but he sent a statement over to the, the crowd, and it was read by like it went up on the big monitor like everyone got a chance to read it you know Oda's message to everybody regarding One Piece we got some very interesting information for the year ahead of us 2018 um, so uh, let's just get into it although before before we get in I just want to bring up one thing this is the promotional poster for Jump Festa and as you can see it features all of the prominent you know characters from all the you know major shonen manga you know of course you have Luffy and Deku and that guy from Haikyuu that I don't even know any Thing about what is Haikyuu about? Is that like a ping pong anime or manga? I don't know. But anyway, it also features all these other characters from Shonen Jump, e even if their series are not around anymore. Like Naruto is in there, Yugi is in there from the original Yu Gi Oh! No Ichigo, no Bleach. I'm like, that is that is straight up cold blooded. Like, at least I don't think I was looking around, I couldn't find him. I mean, I, I understand everything with Bleach and all, but you could have at least, you know, thrown him in the corner, like, or something. Damn, that is straight up cold-blooded. I also want to thank Sandman AP, who was a Twitter user that actually translated this for, you know, the English-speaking world. Uh, I believe this is also the same person that translated those One Piece magazines a few months back, like the whole Sabo bounty thing. So, shout out to him. Uh, so let's just get into it. Let's get into the statement that Oda presented to Jump Festa 2017. Alright. Hi, I'm Oda. Hi, Oda. I'm teching. Do you want to be best friends? Are you enjoying Jump Festa? Oh, well, you know, aside from it being over 6,000 miles away from my present location, yeah, I'm having a ball. It, a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of fun people here. It's, it's great. I got to shake Frankie's hand the other day. I actually visit Jump Festa every year to have a special dinner with the One Piece VAs. Okay, seriously, who would love to be the fly on the wall at that dinner? Like, no, that would be awesome. That'd be like Oda having dinner with all the Straw Hat VAs. That'd be like uh, him knowing everything that's going to happen to them in the future and they have no idea. Or maybe he'll like vaguely hint what's going on. Maybe he's like, oh yeah, Brooke, I'm writing a new song for him. Or, uh, you know, Nami's gonna have to do this. Or there's this big emotional moment coming up with Usopp, so you better get ready. Like, that That would be an interesting dinner to, to be like, kind of like just present for. Okay, but that's enough of the introductory stuff. Let's get to the meat of it, the meat of the issue. Um, there are two points here. One of them is the upcoming arc of One Piece next year, Wano Kuni, which I hesitate to bring up because this is like the fourth video I've made about Wano Kuni. And by the way, in case you're, in case you haven't seen all the other stuff I've done, every other video about Wano Kuni basically starts with me. Wano Kuni's coming up soon. Wano Kuni's coming up soon. Um, and the second point of this is a new adversary that the Straw Hats are going to face off against, and a, and a big event coming up in the One Piece verse. So let, let's get into the first paragraph here. One Piece will finally enter Wano next year. Cheers from the crowd. Some well-informed audience members might think, you said that same thing last year, right? Well, I'm not a member of the audience, but uh, yes. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, I did say that because I thought that One Piece would be able to enter Wano in 2017. This time, I'd like to add some new information. Alright, so... I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole and say 100% confirmed Wano's gonna happen. That's already bit myself in the ass plenty of times before. Now, I think it's a good chance it's going to happen next year. I, I would say it's definitely at least, you know, I, I don't want to even put a number on it, but um, I, I think it's a good solid chance. The majority of a percentage that it's going to start next year, finally. Con considering also that Oda went through, like, he said it was going to happen this year and it didn't, and, you know, Oda probably maybe feels a little bad about that, and he's going to really, really try to get it out next year, uh, because you don't want to be at Jump Festa 2018 and have the same exact statement, like, I know I said it was going to start last year and the year before that, but next year, 2019, is definitely going to be the year of Wano. Um, so I think it's definitely... Definitely likely it's going to get into it, but I'm not going to go 100%. It's 100% going to happen, just because I'm not going to do that. Um, but the, the, the interesting thing here is that Oda decided, okay, 
I'm sorry, I misinformed you. Not, not even really misinformed, it's just that's Oda's writing style. He's come out and said many times before that, you know, he wanted One Piece to end after like five or six years, and he has like the general story broken down. It's just that when he gets into the writing process and everything, it's just like, oh, I want to include this, or I want to do a chapter with this, and it's just, it keeps stretching it out. And that's a good thing, because we find out more about characters, we find out more about the world, we, we, we do that thing, we, we do stuff like that. Like now, are there times in One Piece where it feels like it drags a little bit? sure but it's just he's a little bit more he doesn't want to just breeze through it he wants to kind of give us the full experience and I can respect that okay but to, to kind of make up for that information he gave us last year that did not come to light he drops some new information about next year some stuff that he probably like if Wano started this year and in and, and like what he said last year came to fruition he might not even be dropping this information it might just be something like I'm sorry here here's some extra stuff to kind of to kind of get you excited for what's gonna go down in 2018 so here's here's the big drop right here I'll introduce one of the legends which lurks in the One Piece world the greatest enemy ever for the straw hats will hinder their way perhaps it will be something related to Whitebeard <laughs> oops it seems I'm being too talkative today uh, can you believe that the Marine Ford Summit War will look cute compared to that Anyway, there are tons of stuff I want to draw next year as well. I'll keep moving forward, and with my full force, I'm sure you're going to love it. Uh, and that, that's the entire statement right there. As you can imagine, I'm right. I'm picturing the entire crowd upon reading that entire statement. Like, I don't know if there was, like, Oda's voice saying it, or someone like a like an MC got in front of the crowd and read that whole thing, or if the crowd was reading it themselves. But uh, I can imagine at that end point there, everyone was just losing their shit. Like, ah! <laughs> Yeah, okay. So... Uh, a few points here. Okay, so let, let's just break this down piece by piece. Alright, the first thing is, I'm going to introduce one of the legends of the One Piece world. Okay, well, legend is a big word, Oda. Like, uh, w when we were, like, back in Naruto, you know, people talked about Madara out the freaking wazoo. And so that was, like, a big deal when Madara finally showed up in, like, the, the Naruto universe. So I'm looking at One Piece, and I'm thinking, okay, legend. Now, you could take this to mean two things. You could take it to mean that there's just a character that's just been mentioned, has not been seen yet in the One Piece manga properly facing off against the Straw Hats or anything, or uh, anything of that nature, but it's just been referenced, and we're going to get him into the story. Uh, someone along the lines of Vegapunk. Vegapunk has been a, certainly a, a very popular character in terms of fan theory, what's going to go on with Vegapunk and all that stuff. We have not seen him yet. Um... And so, well, we saw him in flashbacks, but never, like, in full view. We saw him in, like, Caesar's flashback, but never, we never got to see his head or anything like that. Um, so that, that's certainly a possibility. A character that's just been mentioned, never actually seen before. Another thing is legendary in the context of just a really strong pirate. Somebody, not even necessarily a pirate, but just somebody redonkulously strong that the entire world knows about. That form of legendary. And if we're referring to that, well, it also goes on to the next line of dialogue the greatest enemy that the Straw Hats have ever faced. I saw another translation of that. Instead of saying the greatest uh, enemy the Straw Hats have ever faced, it was the biggest enemy the Straw Hats have ever faced. And the relevance there is that when you think big and you think enemy, you think Kaido, right? Like, Kaido, come on, the guy's built like a tank. On top of another tank, on top of another tank, on top of a 737, on top of an aircraft carrier, on top of a nuclear submarine. Guy works out, alright? So, and considering he really wants to get into Wano, and considering we know that Kaido is going to be prevalent in Wano, it would make perfect sense for the Straw Hats to arrive in Wano, and then the greatest enemy they've ever faced up to this point, something that, you know, Crocodile, Eneru, Rob Lucci, Magellan, um, even somebody like the entire force of the Marines, like the Admirals, and, and Free and Blackbeard and, and Big Mom, all of that stuff does not hold a candle to this dude. Kaido is certainly an applicable, you know, you could definitely pop him in there in, in the ad lib of this set of this sentence, okay? It is incredible the stuff he's capable of and, and how Oda has just, you know, hammered into us that he, he can't die and he's just so mammothly strong and he's got all these, you know, the, the, this crew made up of all these uh, artificial devil fruit zone users and you got the calamities and we saw how strong Jack was. 
Um, so yeah, if it turns out to just be Kaido, while it might not some, it might, it might not be somebody mysterious that we've never seen before. But I would be fine with that. I'd be fine if they just next year, you know, we're getting into the whole Kaido shit. I, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Um, Vegapunk's another one, as I said. Somebody else that I've been thinking about, and I'm not exactly sure how you want to gauge this character in terms of the canon of the story. He's definitely part of the One Piece series. He's definitely part of that, but it's Shiki. Okay, so Shiki has definitely shown up in the manga before. He, he's been referenced before by Magellan and uh, all, all the mem some members in, um, you know, Impel Down. Like, he was the only person to break out of Impel Down before Luffy and his group did it. Um, you know, he has the ability of the float, float fruit. He was an enemy of Goldie Roger. Now, there was the movie Strong World where Shiki was very prevalent as the main villain and he wrecks Marine Ford and then he does the whole thing at Merville and all that stuff. All of that, and then that's when he actually confronts the Straw Hats. All of that stuff in the actual movie Strong World, that stuff is not canon. All right, the, the Straw Hats didn't actually go to Merville and do all that crap with Shiki. The but but Shiki himself still is canon. All right, he's been referenced before, and, and I think he's been shown like kind of like. Now you could just say that was just to you know have a uh, you know hype for the movie, but that still doesn't change the fact that he is in the in the past of the One Piece story would be considered legendary. He fought against you know Roger himself. He you you see him hanging out with Whitebeard in a few scenes as well. So uh, and, and that's something else that Oda goes on to say is that they are refer they they are connected to Whitebeard in in some way in some form. So like. I, I would be fine with Shiki making his actual debut in the current storyline, you know, in the canon of the manga, and being a threat against the Straw Hat crew, uh, disregarding the actual plot of what went down in Strong World, and just going with the past of him fighting against Roger, being captured, thrown an impel down, cutting off his own legs, flying away with his float float fruit, being the first person to escape from it, and then just, just laying low for 22, 24-something years, and now finally deciding to make his reappearance, you know, maybe now because he's all oh, white beards dead. This this era is going to shit. You know, these little kids don't know anything about what it means to be a pirate. I know what it means to be a real pirate. And then becoming, you know, the main main villain of this of an arc coming up. That that's something too. Um, and uh, it, I will say though, one of the problems with uh, the Kaido thing I just realized is that Oda referenced, you know, the connection to Whitebeard. Uh, and I don't know if Kaido has any direct reference, any direct connection to Whitebeard outside of them both being Yonkos at one point. You know, Whitebeard was a Yonko, he's of course now deceased, and then Kaido was a Yonko. Uh, and I don't know if there's any direct connection between them. I mean, you could always backbuild those things. You could always say that, oh yeah, at one point in the past, Kaido and Whitebeard had a big battle and it like wiped out an entire island or something like that. You could always say something like that, but it's never been confirmed yet. Um, but uh, then we get to the big one. If we're talking about connections to Whitebeard... Of course, the first person you're going to think of in terms of the story right now at this moment is going to be Edward Weevil, the self-proclaimed son of Whitebeard, uh, uh, you know, and also being one of the members of the Warlords, uh, really strong dude, carries a, uh, a giant bicento, you know, very indicative of Whitebeard. He does have a white mustache, um, you know, and then his crazed mother that apparently had a sexual relationship with... It's okay. Uh, Whitebeard... You know, and we've only seen him this one time in the entire in the entire story. We saw him that one time taking out the A and O pirates, and that was it. Um, of course, the Marines were building him up to be really strong. They were even dubious as whether or not the the title of being Whitebeard's son it ha holds any water. But they were still very fearful of him. They still made him a, a, a freaking warlord. His bounty was very high when it was frozen. It was like four hundred and seventy million or something like that. It was like just south of Luffy's bounty. Um, so it's certainly something very very dangerous is Edward Weevil. Whether you want to say that he's connected to Whitebeard or not, I think what's going to happen is it's going to be something along the lines of like, um, it turns out that his mother has no connections to Whitebeard whatsoever, uh, but Weevil does. I, I think Oda's going to spin it like, because we look at it right now and we think to ourselves like, there's no way that Weevil is related to Whitebeard, but that would be something that Oda would definitely do. It's like, oh yeah, you definitely think he's not. Turns out he is, but not in the way you think, you know, because it's implied right now that his mother got it on with Whitebeard Beard and then Edward Weevil was born. I think it's going to be something like, yeah, yeah, that's not actually Weevil's mother. It turns out that she's the one that's not related to him, 
but Whitebeard is, and then she's just somebody manipulating Weevil, because it doesn't seem like he does, it seems like he only has, like, you know, three guinea pigs up there, you know, running, you know, a freaking wheel, and one of the guinea pigs is dying, um, you know, <laughs> that's, that's how his uh, brain power works, and just manipulating him into thinking that, you know, oh, I'm your mom, and you're gonna listen to me, and all that crap, so that, that might be something along the lines, too. Um, yeah, and I don't really have a lot of other stuff to say about Weevil. Like, I did a discussion video on him. Not a lot really more stuff to go off on there because we haven't seen him. Even since I did that discussion video, we have not seen him. But really big dude, really imposing, uh, and certainly capable of taking out you know, the, the AO pirates, which were allies with Whitebeard, which were a New World crew. So he certainly has the strength to back it up. So, yeah, those are like, when, when you're talking about a legendary character appearing... Um, you know, I, I, you know, Vegapunk in the sense that he's only been mentioned, we've never seen him before, but I don't think it's going to be Vegapunk, uh, because if we're going along the lines of that being the same character that's going to pose, like, a huge threat to the Straw Hats, uh, I don't think it's going to be Vegapunk there. If we're talking about, in that regard, uh, Kaido, Shiki, or, um, Edward Weevil, I think are the only three characters that would be considered, like, legendary and, and maybe possibly connected to Whitebeard. Like I said, with Kaido, it's a little bit, eh, but, um, connected to Whitebeard, that would prove a, a massive threat to uh, the Straw Hats. But for right now, I think I'm just going to play it safe, and I'm going to say that it's uh, Kaido. Kaido right now. Um, I think that would make the most sense. And, and maybe maybe he was talking about two different characters, Oda. Maybe he meant, like, oh yeah, the greatest enemy... Let me look at this again. Just look at this translation. Um, you know, the greatest enemy ever for the Straw Hats, they will hinder their way. Perhaps it will be something related to Whitebeard. Okay, so perhaps. So that's implying that the greatest enemy is going to be related to Whitebeard, so that would be Weevil. I I'm not sure. What do you feel about that? What do you guys think about that? Kaido or Weevil? If it is going to be Weevil, then would that mean that Weevil is going to play a very strong, uh, you know, uh, part in Wano? Is, is Weevil going to go to Wano and, and meet with the Straw Hats there and confront them there? That, that'd be just like, well, I, I'm not against that necessarily, but it's just like there's a lot of stuff going on in Wano because we know the Shogun's going to be there. We know that Kaido's going to be there. And now we're throwing Weevil into the mix too, so I don't know about that. That's a little bit, that's a little bit confusing. Uh, last thing I want to reference is the thing that uh, he says at the end here. Can you believe that the Marineford Summit War will look cute compared to that? I'm now picturing all of, like, uh, Marine Ford, except with all the characters with, like, really cutie, like, like, bunny faces or something. Like, Blackbeard's like, ah, come here, Whitebeard, I'm gonna suck away your power, kitty face. Um, but yeah, no, this is something that Oda's been stating for a while. This was even stated back during, uh, after Dressrosa with Doflamingo. Doflamingo was referencing the War of the Best, and he was, and he was saying, like, that's gonna be nothing compared to the Throne Wars that are gonna be, you know, coming up soon. Um, Law said something similar to this in Punk Hazard when he was like, you know, the War of the Best, that was just a prelude. That was just the, the beginning chapter of a new, you know, big, you know, war or something like that. Um, obviously there's gonna be a big Throne War whenever the One Piece is found, but we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about just what's coming up next. Um, and so the fact that... Does that mean we're going to get, like, a whole other, like, battle arc, like, uh, as long or if not longer than Marine Ford? Because yeah, that would be pretty fun. I, I wish I would have re been reviewing One Piece back during Marine Ford. Oh, my God, that would have been so much fun every week. Just nonstop battles. They've been great. Um, so that, that that's certainly an option. Um, I think that's really more of less just Oda teasing us at the moment. We have no idea what's going to happen if this big event that's going to make Marine Ford look cute is going to be, is that going to occur in Wano? Is that going to be Reverie? Is that going to be something even further down the line that he's just wetting our appetites for now? I don't know, but it's something he's been hinting at for a while. There's a war, a battle on the horizon, and Marineford's going to pale in comparison. He's said that many times. Okay, well, that that's the entire statement. It's not very long. Uh, once again, I want to thank Oda, and I want to thank uh, Sandman AP for the translation from Oda, all the people that sharing it around. Uh, I actually saw this uh, from Yonko Productions. That's that's where I got it on Twitter. I'm just covering my bases, throwing out there where I got all this stuff, because I cannot read Japanese. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's the information we have today. Uh, I would love to hear your opinions on it below, on who this legendary character is that the Strahds are going to meet, and, and the kind of threat. It also might go back to that whole theory that, um, and I don't think this is something Oda came out and directly said, because I feel like if, it, if he did actually say this, it would be way bigger news. Uh, but I remember hearing this a while back, that um, one of the Straw Hats is going to die. 
like that was going to be a thing. And, and I, I don't know if Oda actually said that. I, I really feel like he didn't. Because I feel like if Oda came out and said to like one of his editors or said to like an audience or like a press release or something, yeah, by the way, one of the Straw Hats are going to die. That would be fucking huge news. That would be all over the place. That we, we would still be talking about it to this day. I really feel like that's just something in the rumor mill. But um, hey, you know, greatest enemy ever, you know. <laughs> okay, okay, I don't want any of the Straw Hats to die. I don't want any Straw Hats to die. Brooke already did it once, for God's sake. Come on now, you already went with Straw Hat death. There you go, there's your Straw Hat death. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Comment below, subscribe and like, and all that good stuff. Uh, this will be Techie101 signing out. I'm gonna finish eating this banana now.